So Age of Destruction is a very different serial to your average classic serial, taking place entirely in the TARDIS with only our leads as the cast. From a production standpoint, this is due to one of either two commonly accepted reasons, those being that either the following serial, Marco Polo, still needed time before production could begin, or the more likely reason, the show was planned to be cancelled after 13 episodes due to the low audience response for an unearthly child, and that Verity Lambert was constantly going over the budget. I've heard that there were plans to cancel it immediately after an unearthly child, making only 4 episodes, but the idea changed to 13 so that the cost for the TARDIS could be spread further. For context, the TARDIS console cost around a full episode's budget, and so it was planned to be spread across the 52 episode first production block. This console lasted for 7 seasons, with some repair work, so I think the cost was balanced. Either way, there was a need for a two part story, and so script editor David Whittaker was commissioned to write it. This is why he lacks a script editor credit, due to agreements with the Writers Guild. He wrote it in two days and it does show, but I will admit that I adore Edge of Destruction. It's certainly an illogical story that has to do all it can to stretch itself to fill the two episodes, but Whitaker's character work is so good in this story, I just can't dislike it, and in some ways prefer it to the Daleks. Unlike the previous serials, I won't be breaking the two episodes apart for dissection. Well, kind of. Episodes 1 and 2 are quite different. Episode 1 focuses on building up a mystery with what's happening in the TARDIS. It's a weird episode, somewhat Twilight Zone-esque. Something has happened to the TARDIS. The doors have mysteriously opened, the systems aren't working properly, with seemingly everything being broken, and Susan's gone out of her mind. <coughs> Episode 2, however, focuses on figuring out what's happened, and has a strong emphasis on the characters. We see the characters being torn apart by suspicion, with the Doctor and Barbara being at the forefront, arguing with one another. Barbara figures out that they only have a short time left to live, and the Doctor fears that the central column is about to break free, which will allow the power to escape and destroy them all. And episode 2 is certainly my favourite due to the character work. We see them being torn apart and finally get to see the Doctor's nice side when he reveals to Ian that he lied about how much time they have left, so that Barbara and Susan won't know about it when the end comes. The Doctor is vulnerable here. He asks Ian to face the end with him, something you wouldn't expect from him given his actions up to this point. There's no hope then. I can't see any. Will you face it with me? His argument with Barbara has affected him. Now ultimately they of course don't die, somehow they figure out that the fast return switch is not working properly, and so they have been sent back in time to the creation of the solar system. The Doctor explaining a spring to Susan is definitely funny. You see, let me give you a demonstration. Now look, when I put my thumb on there, the light comes on. And it only stays on so long as my thumb is pressing that switch. As soon as I take it off, a little spring inside releases the, the, the switch here and out goes the light. But the moment before that when the lights are off and the Doctor gives his speech on the formation of a star is just stunning. Hartnell's performance just draws you in as you see the Doctor realise what's happening. But the greatest bit in the serial for the Doctor at least are the scenes where he apologises to Barbara. She just can't accept it the first time, but once they've landed, he sits beside her and opens up to her. When I made a threat to put you off the ship, it must have affected you very deeply. What do you care what I think or feel? As we learn about each other, so we learn about ourselves. The growth these characters have been through in these past three serials reaches a conclusion of sorts. The Doctor finally accepts Ian and Barbara and treats them as proper people. And here we're on to why I like this serial so much. It feels like the end of a story. As I mentioned in my Unearthly Child review, there is the view of the first three serials being one longer story which reaches its end with Edge of Destruction. The characters are brought together in an Unearthly Child 1, spend the serial having to work together to survive, they have to stand together against the Daleks in a different way where they must work together in smaller groups, before finally being broken apart and having to come together again to save their lives. And this is why Edge of Destruction works. Within the context of the previous two serials at least, it by itself doesn't have much going for it. But Whitaker wrote a strong character story which if it did turn out to be the end of Doctor Who would have concluded the series on a high, where the characters could finally call themselves friends and whether they did separate in the end or not they would have been the better for their short time together. In conclusion, Edge of Destruction is brilliant in context even if it's still a confusing 48 minutes. Without it, I don't think the dynamic of the TARDIS crew we see in Marco Polo and beyond could have existed. A small but important story. But now the TARDIS has landed in a snow-covered area where Susan and Barbara have found a footprint that looks as if it was made by a giant. Next time, Marco Polo.